Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and I'm here with part two of my August wrap up. In August, eventually I read 22 books in total. Now part of the reason for this was I had a week off work because I was ill with a bad knee so I couldn't go to work so we just spent a lot of time just sitting around reading. So I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of the books, the next 12. So um, the, f the first book I continued to read was Shepherd and Babylon by Matthew Sweet. This is a non-fiction book about the history of the British cinema. I really enjoyed this because we don't really hear a lot about British uh, cinema and stars. And for years, of course, British cinema has been treated somewhat of a joke. So it's very nice to read about all those stars from years gone by that I've never heard of. Um, it does go right up until around the 1990s, well, to the 80s, really, in British cinema in the 80s, uh, and when it re started in the early 90s and um, being taken seriously with things like Four Weddings and Full Monty. Um, but the truth is that, you know, it, it's a British cinema became a joke in the late 60s, early 70s where it was all like sex films and porno. Um, only one thing is it does dwell on, it does do, not dwell, but it does especially work on, focus on British male film stars like Dirk Bogart and, and things like that, but really ignores the one big British female star that we had, or even the two, and she didn't really go into any detail with Vivian Lee, um, and certainly didn't go into details of Diana Dawes, who was a British rank studio star, which I thought was a bit odd, because she was like one of the biggest stars of, uh, in, in British cinema. And I really enjoyed it, and I gave it, I gave it three out of five, it was worth a read. Uh, then the next book I read was in the second half of August was A Second Chance by Josie Taylor. I really love the Chronicles of St Mary's. They're really really fun. I mean this this time they, they go and meet Sir Isaac Newton and wish you the fall of Troy and even go to Agincourt and watch the Battle of Agincourt. I love this book. I love the series and I gave this a five out of five stars. Next on the list is another book that Peter Mon reco I can't speak today. recommended over at Peter Likes Books and that's Dumpkin by Julie Murphy. I got this a little while ago. I really enjoyed this book. I've seen some reviews where they don't really get it, saying that Wait was supposed to be a big picture uh, but they don't mention it enough. But I don't, I don't know what they've been reading because it's like in every other sentence. I really enjoyed it. I wish this book had been around when I was growing up because I was overweight then. Not as much as I am now but I was still overweight when I was a kid really interested, really loved it. As, as she says, if you want a swimsuit body, you put a swimsuit on your body. You know, and tells you that, yeah, it's ridiculous to worry about things like weight. There's more important things. As long as you're eating healthily and you're exercising, some people are going to be big. I liked it. I loved Willow Dean. I'm hoping there's more than going to be more than one in the series and we're going to learn more about Willow because I really, really enjoyed it and she was fabulous. And I think I gave this a four out of five stars, but I haven't actually mentioned it in my notes, so I'm not sure. No. The next book I bought was an ebook, and I will put the picture up here and that was called In the Path of the Wicked by Justine Buxton. This was a collection of 11 short stories, horror stories and they're really really creepy and freaky. Um, there was one, uh, I can't, they, we've got individual titles and I can't remember them all. Um, but there's one about the monster at the end of the bed, um, one about a room in room 19, I think it was called room 19, something like that anyway, about um, staying in a room in a motel that doesn't exist, scary, and one about um, the seventh, something, something like that it was called, and it's about a serial killer who loves killing and goes out to kill for his seventh time, um, but there's a little twist at the end, so those were really good. I got that as an ebook from Kin, from, from Amazon, and it was 99, 99p it is now, it was free when I got it, it's 99 pence now. Really, really worth a read, I think I give that four out of five, yeah, four out of five for that one as well. Loved it. Uh, the next book I read was The Loney by Andrew Michael Hurley. Now this um, won the Costa Book Awards in 2015 and I'm not actually sure why. Um, the writing is very nice, it's a very nice style, but my book's falling down, my notebook. Uh, wait, hang on a second, excuse me. Right. It's filled with religious talk. Um, I'm not religious, they are Catholic. And Basically, they, it starts off with um, the brother. Brothers are grown up, and Hanny no longer needs his brothers, whose name I can't remember, his help, because he was mute when he was a kid. Um, Hanny has now become a vicar, and married with kids, so he's obviously changed religions. He's gone from Catholic to Protestant, or Catholic, to, yeah. 
um, and they discover a, a child's body is discovered at the Loney, which is a place where they go on pilgrimage every year. But and then it, it basically remembers what happened, and it does keep flipping between the past and the present at, at points. Um, but when they tell you the story of what happened to the child, it didn't really make sense. I'm not sure what happened. And I think it might have been all the religious connotations and all the religious talk that might have put me off reading it as carefully as I would normally. So I'm probably going to reread that one, but I actually only gave it a two out of five stars because I really did not enjoy the story as much. I thought it was a little bit convoluted. It wasn't very clear what actually happened. But maybe that's the point. Maybe that's what I'm missing. So I'm probably going to reread that at some point. But um, yeah, two out of five for that one. And after In the Path, or sorry, after The Loney, I read a children's book that I had once when I was a kid. I don't have a copy of it here because my mum's got it. And that's Five on a Tre Treasure Island by Enid Blyton. Again, I will put a picture here. It won't be the edition I've got. I picked up a few of these because I've wanted to reread them for a long time now. I love The Famous Five. I loved them when I was a kid. I was a member of The Famous Five kid when I grew up, when I was growing up. And I just wanted to reread them. So as you saw in my book haul I did pick up four famous five stories and uh, I read the first one which is actually the very first one and I really enjoyed it although the stories are dated from one sense um, in the sense that there's no modern technology there's no f mobile phones and tablets and computers and that the rest of it doesn't date it is just a story about friendship and becoming friends and sticking up for each other and looking after each other and I don't think the sentiments have changed at all obviously um, a lot of the famous five have been changed now because they've actually, when they've released, re released them in modern editions, they've taken out some of the polit politically incorrect mar remarks. For instance, a, in, there's a sentence in this book where they're saying that George's Isles are smouldering so much they could spark enough to light a cigarette. You wouldn't, they wouldn't do that these days, but back then it would, would have been fine. So I'm glad I picked up an original set in the sense that they haven't been tampered with by the PC Brigade. Um, I love them. I love the stories, they're so simply written, but they, they are fine. And like I said, the only way they date is with the the lack of technology and certain remarks that we wouldn't put in a book today. So I really I love it. A five out of five for Enid Blyton, no question. Then of course, I started with my Harry Potter collection and read The Philosopher's Stone. I've read this one before. You don't need me to tell you what it's about. We all know what this is about. JK Rowling is a brilliant author, a brilliant writer, and she has created a timeless series for the current generation, the same way Enid Blyton did for generations before her. And I think that there will be generations who go on and on who will read and discover the wonders of Harry Potter the way my generation discovered the famous five. And I think it's wonderful. I give this four out of five stars. I think they're gonna get more as it, as it goes on. I really really enjoyed it. There's such a nice read again about finding yourself and friendship and how to deal with bullies and, and things like that. I just loved it. I, I love them and I love these editions and I'm going to be reading The Chamber of Secrets really really shortly. It's on, it's on, I'm going to be reading it this month. The next book was one of the books my friend Julie lent me and that was The Trouble with Valentine's Day with by Julie. Uh, by Rachel Gibson. I should have brought a drink in because I'm really thirsty. Um, this is your typical romance. It's a nice, easy read. I think I gave it three out of five stars. Um, basically, it's just got your predictable plot. Girl's travelling home because she's had a bad experience. Going to stay with her grandfather and help him out in his little shop because his wife's died. Meets a bloke in a um, motel where she stops on the way over or a resort where she stops on the way over because it's snowing badly because it's that time of year. Makes an inappropriate proposition to him. He turns it down. She shuffles off feeling really embarrassed. Goes home. Only to find that said person, his name is Rob Sutter, it runs the sports shop over the road from her grandfather's um, convenience store. Chance of that happening? Very slim. But in book world, very likely. Predictable romance ensues. Will they, won't they? They want to, but they don't because he won't tell her what's wrong, why he's not happy, and she won't tell him what's happened to her and why she's the way she is. So there's lots of those sort of misunderstandings. Very predictable, but what I did like, and it was good, well written, was the relationship between Kate's grandfather and Rob Sutter's mother. 
Kate's grandfather has been mourning his wife for over a year now and feeling he can't move on. All her things are still in the house, all her pictures are up. She was a big Tom Jones fan, all her records are there. He still plays Tom Jones in the shop, won't play anything else. But he meets Rob's mother and slowly he starts to realise though that although he will never stop loving his wife, he can move on, he can have a life and be happy. He doesn't have to die as well. And they get married and that's just a really sweet thing and I think that's what stopped it from being less than a three out of five was that just that relationship was just so beautifully written. I love that part of the book, brilliant. Um, the next one was a free book from NetGalley, so I'll put the picture here for an honest and a, a fair review and that was Tamsin Clark versus Jack the Ripper. I enjoyed this book and I think I gave it four out of five. Yeah, four out of five stars for Tamsin Clark and Jack the Ripper. Basic story is Tamsin's aunt, she's not really her aunt, but she's a close family friend and they call her aunt. Vicky is a um, detective. She goes undercover for the first time and gets killed by Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper is not human, he's part human, part demon. And he, he needs to feed on the flesh of his victims to keep the demon quiet. He's generally a very nice, gentle man who's very polite and, and so on and so on, but the fact that he's Jack the Ripper. What I liked about this is that the way the Ripper killings were done were very, very real. Described very, really, with regards to the original killings. Apart from the fact that the real Jack the Ripper did mutilate the faces of his victims in this book, he doesn't. I really enjoyed it. It was well written. Um, the, the only thing that was unlikely was that Tamsin's mother was investigating the homicide of Vicky, um, even though it's a close family friend. In real, real life, she wouldn't be allowed to. <coughs> Excuse me. It would be a conflict of interest. There's a hint of um, Sweeney Todd, Todd as well, because he bakes the internal organs of his victims into pies and eats them in pies. So that's very like Sweeney Todd because obviously Sweeney Todd's victims they would bake them into pies and serve them up. <laughs> very odd. Nice book. Four out of five. Really really enjoyed that book. After that I read Connecting Doors which is a biography of Diana Dawes and this is by Naima Ash and Jason Dawes Lake who was is Diana Dawes' youngest son. Um, I've seen some really odd reviews on this saying that it's very, very bad, it's not very well written, um, it's very one-sided, and yes, it is very one-sided, but I actually really enjoyed this. For once, here's a book on this lovely woman, it takes you from her birth to her death and beyond, and it doesn't just focus on all the bad things that happened and all the terrible things that she did, and, and she made mistakes, of course she made mistakes, she was human like the rest of us. I really enjoyed the way it was written. It was sympathetic. Um, I don't think we, we're allowed to have sympathetic biographies these days. They've got to be filled with scandal. All the scandal's in here, all the bad things are in here, but they're not written about it in any great detail. For me, the most in interesting part was what happened after Diana's death, because 1984, when, her, when she died, she died of cancer, um, her then husband, Alan Lake, was left without her and his and he had his son to look after or their son Jason he was so distraught by Diana's death that five months after her funeral he killed himself in Jason's bedroom with a, with a shotgun or with a gun he literally killed himself and the first time Jason knew that it happened in his bedroom was apparently when he went in there to get some items because he was moving to America to live with his half-brother Gary and found that his clothes and books were covered in blood and flesh and it, that's when he realised and this was a 14 year old boy um, his life went off the rails which is understandable he'd already had um, an existence of, of, of very lax rules and then he was thrown into a, his half brother's ha hands and his half brother was very strict now I'm not going to go into any more on this because I'm going to might do a full review of this one because I know there's a lot of people out there want to know what it's actually like I liked it, I gave it four, I think, yeah, four out of five stars for this. Um, I'm a big Diana Dawes fan and I will go into more details of, as to why I like her so much when I review this book separately. Huh? Two more to go. So the next book I read in August was Daphne du Maurier's Jamaica Inn. What can I say, it's beautiful. Beautifully written, very atmospheric. Um, I know Bodmin and the area of Cornwall, not brilliantly, but I know it quite well. I know a lot of the places that are mentioned in in the book. So I, I think that's that's always nice when you read a book, when you, you know where it's been written and you know the locations and you, you can picture it. I can see Jamaica in, I can see, I know what it looks like. I can see the moors, I've been on them, I drive across them. 
Love the atmospheric writing. Loved Mary Ellen. Not your typical love story. But there is a love story in there with her and Jem Merlin, but not your typical one, which is great. She doesn't automatically fall into his arms. It's only at the very last three pages that they get together. They resist each other all the way. There's a few kisses and things like that. I love this. I gave it four out of five stars. Read it. You must read this. I will be picking up uh, another of Demare's books very soon. Probably Rebecca, because that's supposed to be even better. So I, I really love this. And on a side note, I'm hoping to go to stay in Jamaica in hopefully next year and I'll if I do that I will definitely vlog the experience for you guys so you can actually see what Jamaica in is like now. I loved it. It's a four out of five stars for me. And then the final book I read in August was Judas Child by Carol O'Connor. Again this book was lent to me by my friend Julie. This one is really gripping. It's a really really good crime story and it's also highly disturbing because it deals with child abduction and paedophilia but it's really good in the sense the way it focuses on the two girls who had kidnapped their friendship and how that friendship carries on when when they just when they find the girls because th there's a twist and I, c I don't want to tell you what that twist is um, because it would spoil it it was a four out of five star read this book is just amazingly written um, basically the main character's name is Rouge and he is a cop. So many years ago, something like 20 years ago, his twin sister was kidnapped and murdered and they thought the priest had done it locally and the priest went to jail for it. He's actually innocent and there have been a series of child abductions and murders across the area of the States. And they, 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 the guy takes two girls, one as a decoy, he takes one to bring out the one he really wants, the one he wants to abuse. He gets, in some cases, their best friend to tempt them out. Um, and this is what we, what happens to Rouge's sister. But we don't know this until later on when we find out how it happened. And he does it with the two little girls now. And he always arranges for their bodies to be found on Christmas Day, which is really, really sad. Not 100% happy ending in this book, but it all, it does end pretty well. And I would recommend you go and get it. It's a really good book if you could pick it up. Um, Julie read this and then she liked it so much. I don't know whether she had it, I think she had it as a library book. That she went out and bought it because she wanted a copy of it. So she could read it again. So it was really good. So that was a four out of five. So as you can see, that was a really productive uh, August for myself. Um, I doubt I will read as many in September. Although I am, I know by the end of October I'll be hitting my Goodreads challenge. Um, I'm very happy with, with what I achieved in, in August and yeah so that's what I've read. I am currently watching all of your August wrap ups so I'm really enjoying those. If you've got any recommendations on books you think I should be reading please leave them in the comments below because I always want recommendations. I do take um, recommendations from people and I do also when I'm watching your wrap ups, watching your hauls, anything I like the sound of I make a note of it and then I'll pick it up later so please leave me recommendations. So if you've liked this, if you've enjoyed this uh, video, give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe and share and I'll see you soon. Bye!